The Hunter ICC2 I2CF800 series controller offers flexible control for up to 54 stations using conventional, two-wire, or wireless outputs all in one system. With built-in flow monitoring, cloud-based access via Centrala software, and two dedicated sensor inputs, this feature-rich model maximizes water efficiency and simplifies irrigation management for residential and commercial sites. In this video, we'll show you how to do the following. Connect a flow sensor, enable flow monitoring, configure flow settings, initiate flow learning, verify accurate flow readings. To monitor system flow, connect the I2CF800 series controller to a compatible velocity-based frequency type flow sensor that uses pre-calibrated K-factor and offset like the Hunter FlowSync sensor. Refer to the sensor's manual to identify wires and follow installation steps for your specific model. First, connect one sensor wire to the flow terminal and the other to the common terminal on the power module. Near the flow sensor output, you'll notice a second terminal labeled with a weather icon. This is used specifically for connecting a Hunter weather sensor, such as the solar sink, rain click, mini click, or soil click sensor. Each input is dedicated. Flow sensors go to the flow terminal and weather sensors to the weather input. Be sure to make the right connections, as mixing up the wires can disable features like flow monitoring and automatic rain shutoff. If you're not installing a solar sink or click sensor, leave the red jumper wire between the weather sensor and common terminals on the power module. This ensures a closed circuit so your controller can perform all functions as intended. After you've successfully wired your flow sensor to the power module, you're ready to activate the ICC2 controller's built-in flow monitoring. To set up flow monitoring, press and hold the plus button on the controller's front panel. Turn the dial to pump, then release the plus button. This opens the flow setup menu. Use the plus and minus buttons to turn flow monitoring on or off and select gallons or liters per minute as your unit of measure. Next, press the right arrow button to configure your flow sensor. When using a velocity or frequency-based flow sensor, such as the flow sync sensor, enter the K factor using the right button and plus or minus buttons to input the manufacturer's specified value. Next, press the right arrow button until the screen reads offset. If applicable, press the right button and plus or minus buttons to input the offset value of your flow sensor. Refer to your flow sensor owner's manual for these values. You've now enabled flow monitoring at the controller, selected your units of measure, and configured your flow sensor. Next, turn the dial to the run position and prepare to input your flow monitoring settings. With flow monitoring enabled, Let's configure your shutdown thresholds and delay settings. Begin by accessing the flow monitoring menu. To do this, press and hold the minus button on the controller's front panel. Turn the dial to pump, then release the minus button. The flow monitoring menu will appear on the screen. Note, to be included in flow learning, stations must have a runtime assigned to a program. Stations without a scheduled runtime will be skipped. To set a high flow shutdown threshold for each station, use the plus and minus buttons to select a value between 110% and 200% of normal flow. If a station exceeds this threshold, it will shut down automatically. An alarm will appear on the display and the controller will continue to the next station in the program. For example, if you set a threshold at 130% and station 5 detects a flow rate more than 30% above normal, that station will shut down. The controller will then move on and finish the rest of the program. Once the program ends, you'll see an H for high flow along with the affected station number, station 5 in this scenario, and ERR on the display. If multiple stations trigger a high flow alarm, the controller will repeat this process for each station in the program. A shutdown across all stations may indicate a larger issue like a stuck valve or mainline brake. 
To set the low flow shutdown threshold for each station, press the right arrow button. Use the plus and minus buttons to select a percentage between 20% and 90% of normal flow. If a station's flow drops below this level, the controller will shut it down, trigger an alarm on the display, and continue through the rest of the program. For example, if you set the threshold at 70% and Station 5 reports just 50% of normal flow, that station will shut down. The controller will move on to the next station and finish the program. Afterward, the display will show an L for low flow, the affected station number, station 5 in this case, and ERR. If multiple stations hit the low flow threshold, the controller will keep trying to move forward. If all stations trigger a low flow alarm, that could point to a bigger issue, like a deadheaded pump or closed water supply. The Total Overflow feature protects against catastrophic flow events, helping to prevent water waste and landscape damage. Press the right arrow button to set the Total Overflow setting, which applies to all stations and programs system-wide. If the flow exceeds the set threshold, up to 1,000 gallons or 1,000 liters per minute, the controller will shut down all irrigation and display an FL error alarm. For example, if you set your total overflow threshold for 35 gallons per minute, 132 liters per minute, and your system detects a rate above this, the controller will shut down all active irrigation, cancel the program, and show an alarm in the display setting, FL error. The delay setting helps prevent false alarms caused by startup surges, thanks to a built-in 60-second delay for high and low flow events. You can add an extra delay, up to 1,000 seconds, to ensure the flow issue persists before the controller responds. To access the delay setting, press the right arrow button. Then, use the plus or minus buttons to set the delay value. For example, if you add a 30-second delay, any high or low flow reading would need to last a total of 90 seconds. The built-in 60 seconds plus your additional delay before the controller triggers an alarm. Note, the total overflow alarm does not include a built-in 60-second delay, but will honor any additional delay time you've programmed. For instance, if your total overflow threshold is 35 gallons per minute, 132 liters per minute, and the delay setting is off, the controller will stop irrigation immediately if that threshold is exceeded. However, if a 30-second delay is programmed, the flow must stay above the preset threshold for 30 seconds before the controller halts irrigation and posts an FL error alarm. Each setting, high flow shutdown, low flow shutdown, total overflow, and delay can be set to off at any time. You can enable any combination of these features or leave them all off as none are required for operation. With your flow thresholds and delay set, it's time to learn the expected flow rates for each station in your system. To access each station's nominal or expected flow rates, press the right arrow button from the delay menu. Use the left and right arrow buttons to cycle through all stations to view the learned flow rates or manually input expected flow rates for individual stations. To manually set a flow rate, Use the plus or minus buttons. To exclude stations from flow monitoring analysis or the automated flow learning process, press the minus button until the display shows the station number and off. In this example, we're manually editing station 5 with an expected flow rate of 7.5 gallons per minute, 28.4 liters per minute. To start automated flow learning, press the PRG button on the front panel while you're in the flow monitoring menu. This process takes 45 to 60 seconds per station. If there are individual stations you want to exclude, set them to off as described in the previous section. To cancel the flow learning process at any time, press PRG to return to the flow monitoring menu. Note. To be included in the flow learning process, a station must have an existing runtime in the controller's automatic programming. If a station does not have a runtime associated with a program, that station will be skipped. Once the flow learning process is complete, 
you'll see the learned flow rates for each station in the controller display. Press the right and left arrow buttons to view each station and use the plus and minus buttons to manually adjust any learned flow values where necessary. To confirm the flow sensor is working properly, press the PRG button on the front panel during irrigation. The screen will show the current flow rate for any active stations. For instance, Station 5 is reporting a flow rate of 10 gallons per minute, or 38 liters per minute. Press the PRG button when done to return to the run screen. With built-in flow monitoring, the ICC2 controller delivers smarter control, added protection, and increased water savings for residential and commercial applications, all in one powerful system. To learn more, visit HunterIrrigation.com.